Jeff Weiss back at you with a further um, lecture on the subject of plant stems, leaves, and roots, the vegetative parts of plants. Some key terms and concepts uh, from this lesson will include the uh, uh, stem functions and examples of modified stems, uh, leaf structures, forms and shapes and functions, and root types and functions. Uh, the functions of all of these will be explored in greater detail in the physiology lesson next week. Uh, stems are a critical part of plants, uh, obviously, and they perform uh, four critical functions. Uh, they provide uh, structural support to um, elevate leaves and reproductive structures above the ground. In particular, trees are spectacular in their ability to uh, uh, provide uh, uh, a high um, place and lots of structure for uh, leaves. And uh, in fact, through this, uh, uh, this evolution of wood has become a, a dominant plant type of plant throughout the earth. Uh, trees dominate in almost any uh, place where uh, people have allowed them to live and there's a minimum amount of uh, rainfall in order to support their, their size. Uh, tree stems also move water and nutrients throughout the plant th through the connective tissue that we discussed earlier called phloem and xylem. Uh, stems may be modified uh, to serve as storage for food, water, and minerals, and we'll talk about some examples of those modified stems. And uh, for horticultural purposes, it's important to note that stems may be used to propagate the plant in certain species. Um, many types of uh, plants, uh, roses, uh, trees, fruit trees, and many other plants are grafted, where one the the, the a plant of one variety or species is grafted onto uh, a second, taking advantage of the uh, root and stem uh, structure of the uh, rootstock plant and producing the desirable foliage or flowers or fruit um, that the uh, scion or the, uh, uh, the grafted plant uh, features. So more about this uh, subject later, but um, those are the four main areas where uh, stems uh, contribute to the um, function of plants. So a little uh, word on stem anatomy. Uh, stem anatomy uh, is uh, depicted here on a uh, cut redwood uh, stump uh, or redwood uh, stem. Uh, and you can see the layers of bark and uh, different types of wood. You can see the, uh, uh, the rays which communicate the uh, uh, materials, uh, uh, nutrients, and plant sugars in and outside of the, uh, of the, of the stem. And you can also see these uh, structures on a smaller scale on a twig. Um, and uh, this uh, illustration on the right depicts uh, growth of a, a stem over time. Uh, and uh, the important terms here are the vascular cambium, which is the boundary and the area where cell um, repro um, reproduction, cell division takes place to uh, cause growth outward in the uh, stem of a plant. Uh, inside the cambium, uh, xylem is produced. Outside the, st uh, outside the cambium, uh, phloem is produced. And those two uh, connective tissues uh, um, enable the tree to uh, uh, communicate uh, critical uh, uh, dissolved uh, materials uh, up and down and across the length of the, tree of the plant. This uh, last one, uh, this last part, begins to illustrate how uh, growth rings take place in the uh, stems of woody plants. Uh, spring wood is formed when uh, the flow of the uh, 
uh, xylem is carrying nutrients up the tree. Uh, those uh, uh, cells get stained and uh, are one color. Uh, summer wood is formed when the plant has leafed out and is uh, um, at going full gear in, uh, in photosynthesis and sending uh, uh, plant materials back down through the tree through the phloem cells and it's uh, a lighter color wood and it's those alternating uh, rings of spring wood and summer wood uh, that cause growth in the uh, width of the uh, stem of the plant and also uh, form those growth rings which enable us to count and um, identify the age of a tree. Here's some examples of modified stems. Um, the first one uh, is are two examples of crowns. Um, a great example in our native areas uh, are the oak trees that are frequently top killed by either deer or rabbits eating them or by fire sweeping over them. Uh, but the crown of the tree usually m remains alive and will send up new shoots every year until finally um, those uh, stems avoid damage and uh, become uh, established as uh, new trees. Uh, stolons are stems that run along the ground and uh, send up uh, shoots and roots from various points uh, along their um, along their development. Uh, rhizomes, uh, example of plants that have rhizomes are uh, uh, irises and uh, uh, some other um, trees. Um, aspens send uh, uh, these underground stems uh, until outward from the parent plant until uh, a bud uh, starts to send a new uh, shoot above ground and uh, a new plant is formed. Uh, spurs are thorns and uh, they include thorns and uh, uh, other uh, prickly structures. Uh, tillers are uh, uh, suckers or uh, new stems that come out from the uh, existing stem of plant. Uh, bulbs, corns, corms, and tubers are other examples of stems um, that can uh, uh, store uh, tissue, uh, store f uh, uh, materials f to support uh, overwintering and growth uh, in the next year. So the actual uh, uh, stem of a bulb is just this plate. The rest of the stem are modified leaves. A corm, on the other hand, is all stem and uh, an example of a corm would be a, uh, a crocus. Uh, it's called a bulb, but it's actually a corm. Uh, that's uh, uh, def uh, Gladiolus also grow from corms. And tubers, we're all familiar with potatoes, and potatoes grow from uh, eyes uh, that uh, uh, jut out from the tuber and uh, will form uh, roots if allowed to germinate. So these are all examples of, uh, of hold on, I'm going to let my Sorry about that delay. Um, the uh, program wanted to open the file of the uh, photo that was in that slide. Um, and then uh, growing from uh, the stems are buds uh, which form the new growth, uh, the twigs and leaves uh, that grow off of stems. And I've got a graphic that shows a number of different types of buds. Uh, buds can vary by their location on the, um, on the stem. Uh, they can grow off the end of the stem or in the axles, the sides of the stem, or they can be uh, adventitious and grow out from the base of the stem. 
Alternatively, uh, bud types can be accessory um, uh, and form the, uh, all of the new uh, tissue uh, of the plant. Uh, pseudo-terminal, they seem to come from the end of the, uh, uh, from the stem, uh, or they can be dormant and uh, uh, lie in wait over winter and uh, break and form new leaves and, and, uh, and twigs uh, come spring. Uh, buds can be scaly, have many of these different uh, scales on the end. Uh, they can be covered with tissue, uh, they can be hairy or naked. And finally, uh, and most importantly for our purposes, the buds can be vegetative, they can uh, uh, sprout and form leaves, they can be reproductive, sprout and form uh, flowers, or they can be mixed, they can uh, uh, have multiple structures uh, formed within those buds ready to um, grow into both uh, reproductive and vegetative parts. Moving on to leaves, uh, their critical role is to manufacture food and uh, they do so via the chloroplasts in the leaves and the process of photosynthesis which we're going to get into more next week. Um, importantly, leaves uh, protect uh, developing tissues such as bud scales, um, Bracts, which are leaves, uh, specialized leaves that cover new flowers, and sepals. Sepals are leaves, again, that cover uh, over flowers, uh, but often fall away uh, once the flower is opened and the uh, fruit begins to develop. And finally, the third function of leaves is to provide storage, as with the cotyledons of new seedlings and uh, the barrels of barrel cactus, which you're all familiar with, uh, are leaves that provide, uh, uh, or maybe I should uh, correct that to say the, uh, uh, the, the prickly pear cactus uh, leaves are important uh, uh, food storage uh, structures for that plant. So the important parts of the plant are the leaf blade, that's the, um, this, uh, uh, structure that consists of the um, the petiole, uh, the uh, leaf axle, the petiole, and the um, green part, the leaf blade. Um, the petiole is the stem that attaches and the uh, leaf axle is the actual attachment to the uh, stem. Epidermis is the outer layer of the leaf that may include a waxy cuticle uh, to protect the leaf from losing moisture or uh, uh, gases from the cells. And the veins in the midrib are important uh, uh, structures uh, in the case of monocots, the veins are usually uh, parallel. In the case of dicots, they're usually webbed uh, or uh, fan-shaped. Uh, so that's an important way of being able to distinguish um, the leaves of different types of plants. This is a, uh, a drawing of leaf structure. Uh, it shows that even within the leaves, the vascular bundles are present. They're communicating the, uh, through the xylem and the phloem uh, the materials needed by the cells to uh, uh, be nourished and to send food throughout the plant. Uh, the trichome is a, uh, a hairy structure, again, used to uh, uh, frequently on many plants to protect the plant from uh, drying out or from wind uh, damage. Then underneath the, uh, uh, the leaf are uh, structures called stomata. Uh, stoma is an opening that allows the exchange of gas and uh, water vapor. Uh, uh, it allows uh, carbon dioxide to enter the plant and uh, for photosynthesis and oxygen to leave the plant through respiration. 
So this is uh, important uh, functions that we'll get into further in physiology next week. And inside the leaf are the various layers of uh, cells that have uh, high concentrations of chloroplast where the real business of photosynthesis is accomplished. Uh, leaf morphology. Um, the two things I would mention, because this is uh, important for uh, plant identification, is uh, whether a, the leaves are um, opposite, that is whether the leaves branch out from opposite sides of the stem, whether they're alternate, whether they alternate on either side of the stem, or whether they occur in whorls, uh, multiple leaves coming out from single points of stem. And then the other element of leaf morphology is leaf shape. Uh, the margin of the leaf, the pattern of the, of the uh, midrib and the veins, uh, the presence or absence of teeth on the edges of the leaf, and the presence of lobes, whether they're rounded or pointed, are some of the important characteristics that help uh, to identify uh, a plant from its leaves. So I mentioned there would be um, modified leaves. Uh, here's some examples. Xeromorphic, adapted to desert. They have a thick walled epidermis and a very dense waxy cuticle. Uh, they may also be specialized for food storage, such as some of the cactuses. A second example of modified leaves are leaves that can be submerged and uh, uh, many types of kelp and seaweed are examples of plants adapted to aquatic conditions. Uh, they have very thin cuticles uh, because they don't need to conserve moisture, uh, but they do have uh, gas chambers inside uh, that allow them to float off the bottom of the water and um, reach up to capture sunlight uh, near the surface. Additional uh, modified leaves are bud scales and floral black bracts, as mentioned earlier, they're um, very important for protecting um, uh, developing buds. So here's some of those modifications, glands, spines and thorns, food storage, and a unique uh, modification of a leaf is found in the pitcher plant. Um, this pitcher plant leaf attracts insects to crawl inside uh, where they're held in place by downward pointing hairs until they uh, reach a little pool of uh, digestive fluid in the bottom of the cell and in the bottom of the leaf and the pitcher plant will then uh, uh, digest the insect and use the uh, proteins for its own uh, development and uh, metabolism. So um, roots, the final uh, organ we're going to talk about today, functions of roots include anchorage, holding the plant firmly in the ground, uh, nutrient and water absorption, pulling materials from the soil uh, and uh, starting to transmit them uh, into the phloem and xylem for movement uh, or into the xylem for movement up into the plant. Hormone synthesis, uh, a lot of that is accomplished in the roots for shoot development, uh, storage, some of the most important uh, food crops that we have, uh, carrots, beets, uh, and others are um, root structures. And then in the tropics, it frequently uh, can be seen that uh, roots, uh, above ground roots, uh, provide extra support and even some absorption to um, uh, enable plants to compete successfully in tropical rainforests especially. Two main root types are tap roots. Those are roots that extend directly uh, into the deep into the ground and are commonly fleshy uh, structures. Uh, fibrous roots are the second kind. No dominant single root but many branches uh, reaching out uh, uh, to access uh, water and nutrients in the soil. Uh, tap roots may extend deep into the soil. Fibrous roots uh, may also, but are more likely to go for uh, uh, distance across the soil rather than depth. So there are two different strategies that plants have 
uh, with their routing systems uh, to enable them to compete. Uh, the, the important uh, zones uh, uh, found within a, um, a developing route include these, um, uh, this, these cells in a root cap that are penetrating into the soil. They're quickly sloughed off, and new, soils are, uh, new cells are formed in this apical uh, meristem. And then there's the root cap, which is this, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the root cap is uh, this structure. Uh, the meristems and the procambium are the other areas that are rapidly developing cells um, and uh, uh, interesting to look at root development under a, a time-lapse photography because it's pretty amazing how uh, quickly uh, uh, roots will move in to exploit opportunities to um, capture water and nutrients from the soil. So with that, I'm out of, uh, I'm out of wind. Uh, you've got uh, um, a, a new discussion board and a new assignment to work on, on on dissections. I'll be interested in your questions and seeing your work. Thank you. I hope this was helpful.